So let's start. So agenda for today, we are going to discuss about what exactly the problems exist on internet with CDN solve for you. What is a CDN and how it helps accelerating static content, accelerating dynamic content, compression, and finally about security. So the very first problem on internet is the internet is make up, made up of ISPs or different ISPs talking to each other. It's basically a network of networks. So in this diagram, you, I have represented ISPs in form of clouds, small clouds. And the big cloud here is the internet. So end user is lying here from whatever device he wants to. Server exists on the other part of the world. When he initiates a request, it lands upon its ISPs. And then the packet flows through several ways, several paths, and then goes to the server and that fetches the response and the response is received by the end user. And the problem here is the paths taken by this packet is not always the optimal path or may not the optimal path. Why? Because that's how the BGP works. If this ISPs think that if I route packet directly to this particular ISP, it might be costlier for me. It will take the uh, another ISP's path, which might be cost effective to him, but it might not be the optimal path. That's why the performance or the round trip time taken by this packet to travel from here to here and then back here might not be the optimal one. So to solve this challenge, CDN helps you. How? We will see in one of the slides. Another problem is that, so the very first problem we saw, talk about, we spoke about was the path. The second problem is reliability. So what's the guarantee that when you are initiating a request and you get a response back, that will happen. Your packet is not going to loss across or loss in any way in between. What if there is a packet loss happening in any one of these ISPs routers? What happens when there is an outage, when there is a power cut or there is a fiber cut on one of the ISPs which impacts your packet transmission. So when you send a request, it goes to another ISP and then somewhere it gets lost. You don't get a response back. The performance is not at all accepted here because you won't get a response back from the server. And it's not a very good end user's experience. You don't want this to happen to your end user. The third problem is the server constraints. So there are various users sitting across the globe and trying to hit the servers for fetching the content. So all these requests are traveling from different parts of the world and it's hitting the server. So there might be a situation that everyone is trying to hit the content and server gets overwhelmed with the request and it's not able to respond uh, to these requests. So that might be a tough situation because server has its own constraints like RAM, like number of concurrent connections it can handle or the pipe, the internet pipe which it is connected to its ISP. It might be connected to a 100 Mbps line and more than like lakhs of users is trying to download the content on that particular server. So it won't survive. Now to solve these challenges, the CDN came into the picture. The very first CDN was Akamai that came into existence to solve these particular problems. We'll see how one by one. What exactly CDN is? CDN, Content Distribution Network. So it's a distributed set of servers, what they call edge server. Why? Because this, the CDN servers lies at the edge of the internet where the end users connects to. So you can see here in this particular diagram the distribution of the servers, edge servers across the globe. And origin server is the main server where exactly the content is residing. The CDN server fetches the content and delivers to the end user. So you are seeing that we are funneling down the request going forward to the origin. There will be limited number of connections, concurrent connections hitting the origin instead of every each and every edge connection hitting to origin server. So by that, we are solving the problem of concurrency, number of concurrent connections. Plus, we will also see in the next slide how we are accelerating static content and dynamic content. So, in this slide, we are going to see how CDN accelerates the static content. 
So static content has those contents which is same for each and every user like images, JavaScript, CSS file, PDF file, MP3 file, movie file or any other static content. So when the first time when the end user makes a request instead of hitting directly to the origin server it will hit the edge server. How this happens is my means of DNS change. So if a, if, so if a website is having a name like www.vivek.com it might be handing up by a server called IP address with 1.1.1.1 .1 when CDN comes into picture instead of that particular IP address the resolved IP address will be of CDN server's IP address something like 2.2.2.2 .2 so the end user servers will land upon the CDN server now the CDN server checks for the request or requested object it checks whether that object is present in the cache or not if it is then well and good it will deliver the content from here itself if not it talks to another hierarchy of caching server or it might hit directly to the origin depending upon the uh, architecture the cdn is following but i'm taking example of multi-layered or multi caching servers here because most optimal accelerators or cdns follow this particular architecture like akamai like limelight like bit gravity they all have multiple layers of caching servers so again this server goes to another server which is near to the origin mostly to check whether the object is present in its cache or not if the object is found in the cache the object, object will be returned from here itself to the child server or tier one server whatever server you call it essentially it's an edge server from here it will deliver to the end user while caching a copy here but here suppose it's the very first request it is it's not likely to be found in the cache of this server or this particular server so this request will eventually go to the origin server now server receives the request founds the, finds the object and delivers that object to the requesting server now this server got the response back suppose there was a jpeg file it got a response it stores that object in its cache it's delivered to the requesting edge server then now this requesting edge server will also store this object in the cache so that in the subsequent request when the another user is trying to download this particular object it will deliver the request from here itself so it will save a lot of time which we took from going this to from this particular server to another server or, or to the origin and it will deliver that content to the end user so if the next time if another end user comes and it requests for that particular object it's the same object it's there in the it's present in the cache of the this edge server it won't go forward it will just deliver the content from here itself now you see that a lot of time was saved though. instead of going all the way to the origin server we delivered the content from here itself so we improved the end user's performance by lowering the latency or lowering the round trip time plus we have also offloaded that server from subsequent requests for the same cached object so server can will be able to handle more number of requests across the globe with this caching server in place now there might be different servers or different end users requesting for the same object from different location so what we do is uh, we have multiple child server or tier one server distributed across and they all goes to same set of parent servers so essentially we are trying to funnel down the request going forward to the origin so that lesser and lesser number of uh, persistent connection is created between parent server or tier 2 server and to the origin server so one more thing i would like to add here in static objects that you define the cacheability of the object how long you want this object to be cached at the cdn server so it's configurable in most of the cdns you can define the time to live period of that object in terms of second days minutes hours whatever you want so if this object is cached for five days for the next five days it's not going to request this object to the origin server but it will deliver the content from here itself but again it's 
depends whether it's going to exist on this cache for five days or not no one guarantees that this will exist on the cache of the cdn server for the next five days if five days is configured time to live value but because uh, you know even the edge servers resources are limited or it's li finite in, uh, in, in in terms of what exactly it can store and how much it can store tomorrow if some other traffic gets viral and the content is requested more frequently than of yours your content might evict out of this particular cache in the server so it's uh, expected that it will reside but it's not guaranteed cool now coming back to the dynamic content we know that the object will not reside at the cache of this particular CDN server now how we are going to do or help the end users perform in this so we know that this request will definitely going to hit origin server so we can optimize the route with the help of well, with the help of CDN to ensure that the path taken by this request response flow is optimal so when the request came to the edge server it goes to the origin and then the response is received and delivered to the end user now this particular path uh, should be optimal one how that is optimized if it's up to the algorithm that the CDN server is going to use like Akamai has got its own algorithm what they call shear route to find the op most optimal path between the server and with, from the origin uh, other CDN providers like Tata CDN what they call predictability they have their own network so they ensure that the packet flows through their network with the best possible path that ensures the least amount of round trip time and thus the best in users performance so we saw that we are accelerating the static and dynamic content with the help of CDN what else a CDN can do so one of the example is accelerating the content by reducing the size of the object now for many end users they when they're trying to download the content and the content is uncompressed uncompressed the CDN server compresses it and then delivers to the end users so with the limited amount of bandwidth that they have between their ISP or between the CDN server and the end user more data can flow in the same amount of time so even with a 1 Mbps speed they might be able to download more content when it is compressed than compared to the situation when the object is uncompressed so in this particular situation let's see if an end user makes a request it goes to the edge server it goes to the parent server it goes to the origin server fine now there's an object which is uncompressed right now it gets delivered to the edge server and there's an algor algorithm which compresses it most of the CDN providers support gzip algorithm to compress this object so this object will be compressed by gzip and will be delivered to the end user now using this we accelerated the delivery here in the in the last mile last mile is the path between end user and its isp where the cdn servers are more likely to reside cool now how server will know what compression the client or end user is expecting so this is done with the help of a header while making a request end user sends sends a header to the server saying that accept encoding and it will mention whether they support gzip or deflate or any other algorithm or any other compression mechanism depending upon that that the server will respond with the appropriate compressed content cool now we spoke about various things accelerating uh, content dynamic content static content and then we also saw how uh, the compression helps and reducing the bandwidth now this compression can be in terms of file compression or suppose in a situation where a very high definition file is delivered to the end user now it it might be possible that you are accessing a website from a mobile device which is having very small screen as compared to the desktop and that scenario you it's not very optimal or not very useful to get the same big picture or high definition image into the small browser that or small screen browser that you're using from your mobile device 
so what CDN does it it can't rewrite this image or compress this image using different algorithm so that you get a response with an image size and resolution which is appropriate for your mobile device now this feature might not be available with all the CDNs but as I know Akamai has one of the product that uses this technique and they call it image manager or their adaptive image compression data CDN is bringing its own product for compressing images many other CDNs will have their own compression products and uh, you might need to just google down on that so this is very helpful when your your users or your end users are accessing your content from different devices right now we are going to see more about CDN capabilities this was all about uh, acceleration or improving the performance but what about availability how to ensure that the content you have resides on the CDN and uh, a person a malicious attacker is not able to bring down the your server and then DOS your website so in terms of web security also CDN plays a very important role because most of the CDN players when you see in the market they also have a product called web application firewall and also DDoS defense now since they have large number of servers huge number of servers uh, distributed across the globe and we know for a fact that the server's IP or your origin server's IP where the actual content reside is not exposed to the end user. So every time a malicious user or an end user is requesting for the content, it will definitely land upon this particular edge server. So when a situation when the malicious user is trying to attack your website, it, it might be a skill injection attack or a cross-site scripting attack or any other attack that is detected by the CDN server what it will do it will block those requests it will detect it will block and it will report to you that this is happening so this is configurable if you want to block it or you just want to have a report or in some of the advanced feature these requests are also sent to a different box or different server where it's like honeypot you grab these requests you see what attacker is trying to do there let them do what they want to do but it's actually not harming the website it's not impacting your actual end users or regular end users which are trying to access your content from your server so in terms of attack it can also block these requests the malicious user will not get any response or might get a 403 forbidden response that's saying that your request is blocked now in terms of DDoS also there are DDoS threats happening across you might be reading news that some of the websites are getting attacked maybe around one TBPS of attack is generated by these uh, malicious users or hackers using botnets if all this traffic is hitting your server or is going to hit your server it will definitely bring down your origin server plus it might also choke the pipe which is used for the connection of your server to its ISP in the data center so this kind of attack is also blocked by CDN servers uh, CDN servers detect this malicious traffic and then block these requests and only clean traffic is sent to the origin server we saw how CDN works what are the different problems exist in the today's internet uh, how the packet loss happens how the path taken by the uh, packet to travel with from client to the server is not the optimal one uh, how there is a limitation on the server capacity and how to overcome that using CDN how CDN accelerates static content and that di then dynamic content how CDN helps to protect uh, your web content or website from the malicious attackers and from the DDoS traffic so I hope this presentation was useful to you. You will have a better understanding of what exactly CDN, how it works. So next time when you're trying to have a CDN for you and you need any help, feel free to ping me or you can leave your comment down below and I'll ensure that I'll answer to your questions. And be in touch because in next sessions, I'm going to explain each and every feature of CDN in detail. For now, We'll just close on. Thanks for watching guys 
and don't forget to subscribe my channel so that you don't miss any future updates.